Welcome to our Sunday streaming service from St. James Episcopal Church in Tempe, Arizona. My name is Pastor Andrea White and I am the interim rector here. Uh, whether friend or visitor, we're glad to have you join us today for the service.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us join together as we say Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you and give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our praise. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let there be so for signs and for seasons, for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, 
There was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree that seed in it you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. On the seventh day, God finished the work he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and how it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8, we will read responsibly by half verse. O Lord, our governor. How exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children. Your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. To quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers. The moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You should have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You gave him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the seas, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, and all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Those almighty words, Oh, uh -huh.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning and welcome to the official beginning of the season of Pentecost. Today is Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost, and it always marks the beginning of that long period of ordinary time that takes us through the summer and fall right up to November and Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the season. I never quite know what to say or how to celebrate the Trinity. It's not like other feast days, which celebrate an event, something that happens. The word Trinity never appears in the Bible. Rather, it is a theological concept that has been discussed and debated and written about uh, by a wide variety of theologians over the ages. Uh, so one certainly with a lot of greater intelligence than I think I have. Anyway, all of them. I've been trying to uh, explain something that cannot really be explained. Some have done a pretty good job of getting to its essence, of providing metaphors that fuel the imagination. But in the end, it is still a mystery, an unexplainable mystery of faith. What I think trips us up is that we are limited by language, by words, uh, to be able to fully explain the experience of God. God defies the confines of language, and for that matter, of anything that our brains can imagine. Even though it defies explanation, what I do know about Trinity is that it is best understood as about a relationship. Or put another way, the Godhead consists of a community of persons. Our liturgy is steeped in images and crafted in ways that speak of the Trinitarian nature of God. Of course, that doesn't guarantee that we understand it any better. Perhaps you've seen uh, the best known icon in the Western tradition and one of my very favorite icons and uh, a gift that I received upon my ordination and one that I have hanging in my home office is the Trinity icon created by Russian artist Andrei Rublev. The icon is also known as the Hospitality of Abraham uh, because it depicts the three angels who visited Abraham at the Oak of Mamre. Uh, that's in the Genesis, uh, the book of Genesis. The icon, however, is full of symbolism, and it is interpreted as an icon of the Holy Trinity. At the time of Rublev, the Holy Trinity was the embodiment of spiritual unity, peace, harmony, mutual love, and humility. In the Eastern Church, icons are believed to be doors that open into sacred spaces a visual art form. Icons can reveal what words cannot. Our God is infinitely more complex than we can wrap our brains around, and yet has chosen to be with us, to relate to us through body, mind, body, and spirit. As far as I'm concerned, it's not as important to understand the theological nuances of Trinity as it is to wonder and reflect on the question, in what ways does the 
doctrine of the Trinity help us as Christians to fulfill and live into our call to be representatives of God's love in the world, in the world that we live at this time in history? Or for, matter, or for that matter, does it? And how might that happen? As Bishop of Georgia, Frank Logue, uh, writes, in this time of pandemic, and I would also add racial injustice and unrest, grasping the essence of the nature of God is urgent and important. We find in scripture and the teaching of the church that the nature of God is an essential is in an essential connectedness. This communion with God's own self gives us a glimpse into the very heart of God and knowing that a deep connectedness describes well the universe in which we live, it speaks to the longings in our heart as we are separated from others. So that's the direction I'm headed in today, to ponder the question of what it means to be in relationship with a God who is in so many ways unknowable. God has already chosen us, so it is indeed up to us to choose to embrace that relationship, freely given the gift of God's love and allow it to direct our lives and empower us to live out that which we have so graciously received. The scripture readings for today provide some insight into how that might look, um, and as is the case, offers many paths to explore. One thing I will point out about the stories we hear today is that they are full of blessing and direction. The Genesis reading recalls the beginnings of creation, which at every step of the way, God blesses and calls good. Even humankind makes its appearance and then directs creation to go out to be fruitful and multiply. Humankind created in God's image is also directed to be fruitful and multiply, but in addition, humans are given the task to oversee and care for creation, to become co-laborers with God in preserving the goodness of creation. In the next reading, the Apostle Paul blesses the Corinthian community in the name of the triune God, reminds them of God's love for them, and encourages them about the importance of creating peace-filled communities that get along, that love and care for one another, and live into their newfound identity together as the body of Christ. Finally, in the gospel reading from Matthew, the disciples are gathered on the mountaintop where Jesus has told them to go. And there he blesses them with his presence and directs them. What he actually does is he commissions them to go out from that place and do everything that he has prepared them to do with the assurance that they will always know his presence. It will be with them every step of the way. So what I get from this is part of the answer to knowing and understanding our relationship to an unknowable God. And that is to be open to receiving the blessing, which is to say love that God showers on us. This blessing carries with it no restriction. It is for all and doesn't depend on what we do. However, when we accept the blessing, when we are filled with that love, our response to that love directs us to be, to respond in kind. Of course, we know that it's not the way things always work out in spite of what our best intentions might be. We don't always respond in kind and loving ways. 
We forget about our connectedness to God, to each other, and to all of creation. And some doubted, the gospel tells us. So we know that even the disciples who knew Jesus did not fully understand what shape their future relationship with Jesus and God would look like. In spite of that, they mustered up the courage and took to the road anyway and began to tell their story, the way of Jesus, to everyone and anyone they encountered on the way. I imagine things didn't always turn out like they expected, and for sure they didn't always see things in the same light. They had their share of disagreements. We're having some of the same challenges today. We have expectations of the way things should be, often without the benefit of a deeper understanding of the issues at hand. And then there's the struggle of what do we believe? What can we trust? On that journey, the disciples would meet forgiveness, healing, compassion, peace, joy, and love. And like when they traveled with Jesus, they would also experience violence, oppression, rejection, fear, and death. The road would become their teacher, and they too would learn a lot because now they were teaching others what they knew. It surely was not an easy road to travel and it hasn't gotten any easier. This pandemic has really revealed many things to us, individually, as families, as a community, and as a nation. We've been given the gift of time and distancing to reflect on these things. What will we remember about these days when a deadly virus has kept us cooped up and separated from everyone? Will we remember how we had to go on to online worship and what that was like? Will we remember the people left behind because of technology? Will we remember the panic, the hoarding, the despair? Will we, remember, will we remember about how we had to protect not only ourselves, but others by staying sheltered and wearing masks when we went out? Will, remember, will we remember how almost everything was closed down? Will we remember all the people who lost their jobs and livelihood? Will we remember how we took care of ourselves and spent our time? Will we remember our sadness of not being able to visit with family and grandkids and friends the way we used to? And will we remember the over 100,000 lives lost? Now, in addition to the pandemic, our country is wrought with division, with protests that have led to destruction and more deadly violence. The country is crying out for a prophetic voice, that voice that will bring a sense of calm and peace to a tragic situation. Nothing will be solved by idle speculation about how this got so out of hand and who is to blame. It's merely distraction. We can and we must do better until we can listen to the anger and frustration and pain of our fellow brothers and sisters with compassion, with empathy. Nothing will change. We've been down this road before, too many times. 
and let us all not forget that this time, right before our eyes, a man was needlessly killed, a victim of injustice by those whose duty it is to protect, regardless of who that person might be. The Genesis story today tells us just how deeply we are all connected to the entirety of creation. God's blessing reveals to us God's love for all. Through scripture, through nature, and finally, through that most perfect revelation of God, Jesus the Christ. No one is left out unless they choose to be. Thinking back now to the Trinity icon, we can see that intimate connection and relationship with God within the Godhead. This is what we strive for in our spiritual lives, the way we meet the unknowable God. We are conduits of God's love and grace. And as such, even the, in the midst of deep divisions in our society, we are to continue to reach out to those in need, to those feeling great despair and anxiety. And as our presiding Bishop Michael Curry continues to remind us, the way of love is what will get us through this. Amen.
Please join today as we affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we say, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Bound together in Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to our God, saying, Holy Trinity, hear us. With the love which passes ceaseless, ceaselessly between the Father and the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us gathered together here into your unending life, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. For the leaders of the church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, for the leaders of, our nation, of all nations, that they may discern the ways to overcome divisions and mistrust, and may reflect your unity in every aspect of common life, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. That your self-disclosure in Christ and your enduring presence among us as spirit may help us to understand both you and ourselves, made in your image and likeness, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. For our families, our households, and our communities, that they may be places of communion and mutual support, which builds us up and strengthens us in grace and truth, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. Thankful for our world, which, made you, which you made through Christ and renewed in the power of his resurrection, that we may be wise and careful stewards of creation, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. In the power of the Spirit who joins our prayer to Christ's enduring intercession, we pray for the sick, the suffering, and all who stand in need, especially Janie, Dana, Christy, Carrie, Simon, Patty, Ray, the Muller family, the Spence family, Sandra, Robert, the Hollis family, the Hollis family, Luke, Ellen, Anne-Marie, Russ, Rob, Jeff, Jean L., Rhonda, the Dressel family, our siblings and families in Navajo land, and our frontline per medical providers, Becky, Tessa, Pat, Ashley, Damian, Donald, and Lynn. We acknowledge and we acknowledge, pay respect, and pray for the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community as the original people of the land and their role as custodians of this land given to them by our one and only creator, God. We pray for all affected by COVID-19, violence, terrorism, and natural disaster. And we pray for those in the military. We pray also that God will send us those who are hungry to know and follow Jesus, that we might welcome and walk with them on their spiritual journey. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for La Iglesia Anglicana de Mexico and in our own diocese for San Rafael in the Valley in Benson. And for the healing of the entire world, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. For all who have died and for those at rest in our memorial garden, that they may continue to support us with their love in the communion of saints, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. 
gracious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day. By the inner workings of your spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life, and make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ who lives and works with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please accept the greetings of the people. Okay, today we have um, four birthdays to celebrate. So if you will join me in saying the birthday prayer. Uh, first, of all, first of all, I should say whose birthday it is. It's uh, Kurt Zarsty, uh, Carrie McCullough, Donald Hollis, and Whitney Hollis. So we have four people to pray for. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 We have an anniversary to celebrate today. Christy and Jerry Carlston. And I don't know exactly which one it is, Christy and Jerry. Maybe you can let us know through the chat. So let us pray. Lord God, constant in mercy, great in faithfulness. With high praise, we remember your acts of unfailing love. We bless you for the joy which your servants have found in each other. We pray that you will bless them with power and patience, affection and understanding, courage and love toward you, toward each other, and toward the world, that they may continue together in mutual growth according to your will in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, now it's time for our announcements. 
And I want to remind you about our virtual coffee hour that begins after this service at 10.30 a.m. We also have Christian formation happening at 1.30 p.m. today on Sunday. And uh, we're doing our today services now the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. So it will be held online on Tuesday, June 9th. So that's next week at 4.30 p.m. Uh, you can find the links in the Thursday Thoughts email. It is time now that we honor our Father. So Father's Day is on June 21st, and we'd like to offer a special Father's Day tribute like we did with Mother's Day uh, on that, with that service. So please send your pictures of fathers and children to info at stjamestempe.org uh, by Tuesday, June 16th. Our presiding bishop, Cur uh, Michael Curry, has asked us to include this next prayer um, in our services uh, that we hold for the next few months. So um, I ask you to uh, pray with me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us the holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now it is time for our blessing today for Trinity Sunday. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.